dry summer season always marks the high point for wildfires, and this year it was Arizona that suffered the most significant blazes this year. But from the tragedy comes a story of taking responsibility and ultimately of forgiveness. Paul Boyd reports. Americans watched in disbelief as the worst forest fire disaster in Arizona's history roared across the state. The fires raged for more than three weeks. 30,000 people were forced to evacuate and almost 500 homes burnt to the ground. This thick layer of black ash stretches across 470,000 acres in eastern Arizona. In some parts, the destruction carries on as far as the eye can see. It all started on June 18th with a blaze that became known as the Rodeo Fire. 29-year-old Leonard Gregg reportedly told investigators that he started the blaze so he could work as a firefighter. He's pled not guilty to the charges. Two days later, with the rodeo fire still raging, a 27-year-old woman named Valinda Jo Elliott started a second fire in the wilderness, and her blaze became known as the Chedeskai Fire. Those two fires merged together into one gigantic blaze. Both fire starters instantly became targets for angry residents, and now many wonder if justice is being served. You see, Leonard Gregg could spend up to 10 years in prison if convicted, while Valinda Jo Elliott is facing no charges. But you may be surprised at what Valinda Jo Elliott has to say about her situation and what she's willing to do to make amends. I didn't set that fire for money. I didn't set it for a job. Valinda maintains she set a small signal fire to save her life after being stranded in the wilderness. According to Valinda, she got lost while driving with her employer through rural parts of eastern Arizona. They were servicing vending machines. As her story goes, they ran out of gas on the remote back roads of an Indian reservation. She separated from her employer but got lost again. Valinda ended up spending three days stranded with no food or water, only wearing flip-flop sandals. But then Valinda saw a helicopter television crew flying nearby, reporting on the first fire. Desperate to be rescued, she used her lighter to set a bush on fire. Her smoke signal worked and the helicopter landed and saved her, but the fire went out of control. Now, for the first time, Belinda Jo Elliott is returning to see the destruction. Why have you decided to come up here today? To apologize to these people personally. Face to face? Face to face. Eye to eye? Eye to eye. Are you a little nervous? Very. And that's very understandable because some communities in northern Arizona have verbally attacked Valinda for starting the fire in the tinder dry conditions. Things boiled over at this town meeting where the U.S. attorney told residents he wasn't going to file criminal charges against Valinda Jo Elliott. This man even threw a charred log on the gymnasium floor, saying justice wasn't being served, and most attending agreed. This woman burnt half of the, the hilltop, and, and they're sitting there going, well, we couldn't find anything to charge her with. Bull. Despite all of that, Valinda still decided to drive more than two hours from her home in Phoenix to the devastated communities. Her lawyer, David Cantor, says she's been reluctant to return here, but he insists she has nothing to hide. She did everything any reasonable person would do in that situation. It was beautiful. Wanda Clark lost her home to the fire. She was waiting along with other homeowners to meet the woman they hold responsible for all of this. While okay, we were talking, Belinda Jo Elliott pulled up behind us in her truck. Are you hesitant to look her in the eye? No. And then the fire starter met the fire victims. Hi, I'm Belinda. Hi. I'm sorry you guys lost your home. I really am. Come to my home. I'm sorry. Come to my home. They walked through the ashes and looked at what was left of Wanda Clark's home. And this is where they're standing right here. It's my kitchen. And as you would look out the kitchen, we'd watch the squirrels play. I fed the squirrels and the birds back here. And this was my favorite room because I hung all my plants here. This is where Wanda's children and grandchildren spent most of their time. It's even where Wanda's daughter got married.
a backyard wedding ceremony just three years ago, but the lush green surroundings and hand-built waterfall are gone now. After seeing the destruction, Valinda tried to explain why she left the fire she started. You know, I would have never gotten that helicopter if they would not have told me that there was somebody on the way to dump water on it. One by one, other residents and homeowners came forward. And yes, it was a dumb thing to do. Yes, we're all hurting. But I think it's time for this community to say we love you. Thank you. Look, anybody can make a mistake. Why the sudden change of heart? We were waiting for her to say she was sorry. To look you in the eye. Yes. To be here. To be here, to see what we've suffered. We've seen her running. We haven't seen her, her remorse. So now residents are redirecting their anger towards the federal government, calling for changes to the way forests are managed across the country. If you don't learn your lessons from the past, your history is destined to repeat itself. But Linda, we got to be done with you. <laughs> we got to move forward. And the communities are doing just that, rebuilding and embracing everything that didn't burn to the ground. As for Valinda Jo Elliott, well, now she's actually helping with the cleanup effort and looking for closure. Linda, do you believe this will bring an end to all of the outrage towards you? Most of it. Most of it. Not all of it. I'm sure there's still going to be people out there that doesn't understand and won't listen. An unforgettable summer for Valinda Jo Elliott and everyone touched by the flames in Arizona. The loss of timber alone in those fires has been estimated at $237 million.